Nice spin move there by Terrell, and he drains it. Ryan Terrell is starting to heat up. What a great reverse there by Ryan Terrell. Is there anything this guy can't do? Ryan Terrell gets double teamed, shoots it anyway, and knocks it down. Inside, Terrell underneath, gets it to go. Ryan Terrell takes the ball. And that's a one-handed wow. slam jamma I mean, Terrell, the pull-up. As Baker takes it down, and here goes Terrell. This is going to be fun. Ryan Terrell. Good morning and welcome to the Max Stern Athletic Center. I'm Ro here, it's about alongside me is the Kiva Poppers, and this is the NTY Summer Pregame Show. In just a few minutes, we'll have the Tier 4 Championship game between the Cooper Max and the Montreal Heat. Kiva, can you give us a look, take a look at these teams and how they really got here today? Well, for Cooper and for Montreal, they both lost on Thursday. Cooper was upset by Barron by a point. Montreal played a very close game against Ida Crown, who's going to be playing in the Tier 3 Championship today, but ultimately fell. But both teams came back strong on Mose Chavez, winning pretty easily. Montreal over Sky and Cooper over Pitt. So now they're here, and they both have a chance to take home some hardware in the Tier 4 Championship. Feel free. Well, both teams are exceptionally talented, Akiva. So can you give us a look at the talent that each team has? Sure. For Cooper, Ethan Morris, Simcha Azdoba, and Nassi Orgel. I was talking to Coach James Noakes for Cooper before the game. He said Azdoba the entire tournament's been about 30%-ish, but today he's feeling a little better. That's why he hasn't been taking as many three-point shots as usual. He is generally the best three-point shooter. And for Montreal, of course, Joni Trayson, the 11th grade senior, because in Montreal, they only have three years of high school. And Ethan Fallenbaum, the 10th grade junior. So some excellent players. Even though it's a tier four championship, both teams have stars. Well, this Montreal team, even though they end in 11th grade, they are certainly a talented group. This has been the NTSY Summer Pre-Game Show. Cooper, Montreal, we'll be right back with you. And welcome back to the Max Stern Athletic Center for this Tier 4 Championship Final. I'm Akiva Poppers. Alongside me, Roy Hersfeld. The Cooper Maccabees have already taken the floor. The Montreal Heat are still in their huddle. For Cooper, they're going to be going with the five seniors. Their last game with the team. David Frieden, Asher Kirstein, Ethan Morris, Nussie Urgel, 
and Simchas Dober for Hebrew Academy. A little bit of a different lineup than usual. Of course, the stars, Yoni Drazen, Ethan Fallenbaum, and Benjamin Frundlich. They're also going with Eitan Levy and Yaakov Azule. This is an early start, but I'm expecting both teams to come out strong, hungry, ready to compete. Yeah, the, when, you know, when there's hardware on the line, when you can win a trophy, this is what each team is here to do. So when you can win a trophy, you're going to put your best effort on the line from the start. The tip goes to Montreal. Levy will take up the ball. Levy passes to Drazen at the top of the key. He will control the offense for Montreal. Pass to Azale. Azale. Great move inside by Ethan Fallenbaum. Gets the early two to put Montreal up and their fans, which are here, are making some noise. Asdoba. Asdoba passes to Frieden. Drazen on Frieden. Up to Morris at the top of the key. Morris. Morris being guarded tightly by Fallenbaum. Orgel comes up to set a pick. Morris trying to get around Asle. Looks inside. Finds Kirstein. Kirstein dumps it off to Asdoba. The mid-range jumper is no good. And here comes Levy pushing for Montreal. Some press trap by there by the Cooper. Yeah, they love to trap, but that one did not work out. Azale with the ball. Azale driving towards the basket with three men around him. Can't get it to go. Morris knocks the rebound to Orgel. Gets it to Morris. Morris is pushing. Morris to Azdoba. Azdoba back to Morris. Outside. Frieden. Frieden drops it off to Morris and look to reset. Gets it to Azdoba. The Montreal bench still making noise. Frieden with Drazen on him. Frieden. Not sure what to go. Not sure where to go. 15 seconds. Gets it to Morris. Morris beautiful feed inside to Asher Kirstein. Puts Cooper on the board. We're tied one and a half in. What a beautiful feed that was. Yeah, well, what a find that was there by Ethan Morris. Found the open man who laid it in. And Drazen takes it coast to coast off the pass. No foul is called. Quickly getting to Azdoba, who runs into Azale. Gets it to Morris. Levy fouls him. And they're going to call it just a regular personal foul. And it'll be Cooper to him out from the side. Drazen a little shaken up, but he looks totally fine. He's getting to his feet. And nothing to be worried about there. Simcha Azdoba, while only, as we said, about 30%, about 40%, making the tough effort play, knocking into Drazen on the other end. Azdoba, she gets up strong. Drazen, while a little limpish, is completely fine. And we'll just take a one-minute break. We're going to see Nahma Man enter the game. He came up huge in their opener against Ida Crown. Really, it's an electric spark off the bench. I expect more of the same from Nahma Man here. He, has, he was a spark off the bench in their Thursday game, as we see the hardware being brought behind the inbounds pass. Well, that's got to be exciting for both the players, seeing right there what you're playing for. Oh, yeah. Definitely some motivation here, if they need it any more. Asdoba with front lift on him. A couple fakes. Out to Frieden. Gets it to Kirsten on the left wing. Stolen by Mann. Mann comes up big. Mann driving to the basket. Mann goes coast to coast but can't put it in. Excellent effort by Frundlich on the other end. But they give it to Cooper. Yeah, that was Nachman Mann just as we talked about. He entered the game with Seal. Nearly had a fast break layup but couldn't get that one to go. We're already seeing some spark there by Nachman Mann. And look at Frieden pushing it all the way on the other end. Trying to pass it, pass it to Morris and... Eitan Levy upset, saying that the pass went off of the ref's leg. The ref says, Eitan, it's Cooper ball. Orgel gets it to Azdoba, Azdoba to Morris. Good passing early from Cooper. Man on Morris, much smaller man on the much larger Morris, the biggest man on the court. Little mid-range jumper from Frieden is good, and Cooper takes the lead. Frieden does a nice job with the pump fake to get himself ready for the open look. Fallenbaum just takes it himself. Now Montreal after Mann lays it in. Montreal is used to playing with a 24 second shot clock. They're pushing it a little bit early. And I was talking to Coach Lee before the game. He said, you know, cool it down a little bit. We're looking for the highest percentage shot on the floor. As Morris fakes I mean, a no look pass inside to Kirstein. Something which he did all day on Moze Chavez. An early timeout is taken by Montreal. And after Montreal got out to a two nothing lead, we've seen a little bit of fast pace action early, but Cooper has dominated the early quarter so far, even though they are only up by two. Well, that's Ethan Morris, who's one of the stars of this 
of this Cooper team. He made an excellent pass to find his man on that last play. We were talking to Coach before the game. He said, Morris is so capable and so talented. I don't think he's shocked by any of that he's doing. Yeah, he just wants Morris to do the simple things right. Just get the simple passes off. If you have an easy look inside, take it. If you have a good man inside to do it, take it. While he did have a beautiful feed, no need to get ultra fancy unless, of course, it is the definite right move. They're going to call a travel. Travel on Fallenbaum, forced by Morris. A good job by Morris right there. I believe that was Azule who actually walked there, but either way, Cooper will take the ball. My apologies as Morris brings up the ball and gives it to Azdoba some good motion and passing once again from Cooper. Azdoba pointing out where Orgel should go. Pass to Kirstein. Kirstein with Levy on him, gets it out to Frieden as the Montreal bench once again makes noise. Azdoba makes a move on, on Frundlet. Frundlet steals the ball. Frundlet pushing. Beautiful job. Beautiful job by David Freedom on him, but the rebound goes to Drazen. Drazen can't get the first one to go. Drazen gets his own rebound. Drazen lays it in. This game is tied. <laughs> As Kirstein's pass went off of Adoba's back and right to Frieden. Kirstein backs out as Levy manned him up. Inside pass to Morris, but he can't do anything with it. He's forced to make a near iron pass, but it gets to Kirstein. Kirstein tries to lay it in. The foul is called on Montreal. Kirstein will be going to the line for two. The foul, I believe, called on Jakob Azule. Just to take a look back at the play we had before, Yoni Drazen staying with, staying with the ball, staying with possession, rebounding the ball twice before putting it in the hoop. Excellent perseverance there by Yoni Drazen. Yep, yeah, Drazen, the, the star player of this Montreal team. And actually, he's playing in the second Tier 4 championship game, even though he's only in 11th grade, because two years ago, Montreal was in another Tier 4 championship game. Well, how did that one fare out? That's exactly right. Montreal played in the Tier 4 championship a couple years ago, but couldn't, couldn't get the victory. They lost to Kohela in a tight game. Hopefully, for Montreal, they're looking to win this one. From the pushing the ball inside to Drazen. Drazen is fouled by Orgel. It'll be two shots. After on the other end, Kirstein hit both of his free throws, and Coach Noakes calling Kirstein one of the hardest workers he has. Foul called on Orgel. Nasi Orgel, he's the big man here for Cooper, and we are talking to Coach Coach Maury Levy of Montreal before the game. He was saying they're going to have to defend Orgel horizontally. So far we haven't seen Orgel really make too much of an impact offensively, but we know what he's capable of for this Cooper Max team. Yep, he inside in the first game had eight, no I believe actually nine buckets inside. One place where he struggled was from the line, but... His size advantage, especially over some of these smaller tier four teams, has been tremendously huge for Cooper. Pass to Morris, who tries to thread the needle to Frieden. Levy steals it, Levy pushes. Into the game is Cohen. He doesn't pass to Cohen, instead he takes it himself. They call the foul on the shot, and one for Levy, as Montreal takes the one point lead and looks to extend it 2-2. What a beautiful move by Levy, and some early foul trouble for Nussie Orgel, his second, both of Cooper's fouls, have been committed by Orgel. That was Aton Levy driving the ball in and using the left hand to put it in the hoop. What a move there by Aton Levy. And the coach's son knocks down his free throw as well. Giving Montreal a two-point lead here as we're almost halfway through the first quarter. Some good scoring action. I've, I've not, not a lot of ugly play. Some good offense in this game so far. Into the game walks Caleb Malapski. Memphis... Cooper star himself. Former Memphis Cooper star. Well, of course, of course. Otherwise, he would be on the court as Kirstein tries to lay it in. Going after the rebound is Morris. Morris gets to it. Nearly travels. And I thought he traveled in the corner. Gets it to Azdoba. Azdoba, beautiful feed inside to Mendelssohn, who just puts up the little three-foot jumper to tie the game. So Azdoba working the ball around, staying patient, finding the open man. It's exactly what you want to see. Aaron pass taken by Cohen. Cohen pass inside to Frundlich. Frundlich lays it in. Montreal up two, but Cooper, as usual, not afraid to push, but they don't have numbers. They slow it down a little. Azdoba tries to go inside. We have a foul on the floor committed by Frundlich. Actually quite a smart foul right there. And Cooper will inbound the ball from behind the basket. Azdoba looks to get an inside lane to the court. We know that he loves to drive inside. Yeah, well, Azdoba had him beat. We know what Azdoba can do offensively. And I expect to see Montreal thinking to maybe take some charges here in order to limit that. Yep, especially with the way that Ostoba drives to the basket. Getting set is critical. 
Kirsting to Morris. A little bit of a switch. Drop inside. They tried to do a give and go from Kirsting to Morris. Pass was a little bit behind and Drazen pushes. Drazen wants to take it coast to coast. Drops it off. Easy pass inside for the easy lane for Fallenbaum. It's a 14 to 10 lead for this 19 seeded Montreal team over the 15 seeded Cooper. Frieden with Drazen on him. Pass to Morris. Morris being guarded very closely by Fallenbaum. Open pass, Kirstein open look, long on the three, rebounded by Montreal. Fallenbaum gets past Frieden, he's pushing. Looking for a good look, Morris tries to get the block, the, the layup is no good, the ball is off of Cooper. It'll stay with Montreal behind the basket with a new shot clock because the ball hit the rim. If Montreal looking to push early, they're really emphasizing the transition game here. They're a little smaller than this Cooper team, so I'd expect them to try to win a speed battle here. Yeah, and, and Coach Levy said they love to play a horizontal game as we have a three-pointer taken by Fallenbaum. In and out and in! As Montreal takes the early seven-point lead, they've come out on fire and Cooper's pushing. Azdoba tries to get inside for layup. They're going to call a blocking foul and say, it's on the floor. You've got the inbound from behind the basket. For Montreal in that possession, that was Ethan Fallenbaum, who has seven points already in this short first quarter. Ethan Fallenbaum, he went to step it up. He's playing very well here today. Yep. See what step it up could do here, guys. Yeah, step it up, an amazing basketball camp, and of course one of our sponsors. As Kirstein gets the ball right by the timeline, Kirstein passes. A long three-pointer taken from the corner. No good by Joel Weinstein. Foul called on Cooper on the floor. The third by Cooper early with 2.22 left in the first. It's still 17-10 Montreal. Montreal will take the ball out from behind their own basket. And as I was saying before, Coach Levy saying that because his team is not so tall, they like to play horizontally. They like to play horizontally. They do a man help. And I heard some rumors of, of ways to take out big players for Cooper. That's exactly what they need to do, play horizontally. But that's not how you take out Morris. Not by getting blocked by him, as Fallenbaum was right there. Morris just with his length, jumped up there and swatted the ball away. Kirstein misses one before, doesn't want it this time. Instead, he gives it away. The errant pass goes to Fallenbaum. Fallenbaum lays it in. It's a nine-point lead for Montreal. And Coach Noakes for Cooper is not happy, especially because this up-tempo team likes to get ahead early in quarters. Well, what a first quarter we're seeing by Ethan Fallenbaum so far. Is nine points already. Morris getting around foul. Morris going all the way to the basket. Can't get it to go, but he'll get two foul shots. Morris once again being down inside. And can you tell us what we heard Coach Levy saying he might do to take away Ethan Morris? Well, he said, Morris, they might even go to box in 1D if they see Morris's game just... When he gets so hot, he's nearly unstoppable. They might switch to box one defense. We'll let you know if we start seeing that. Of course, we will. A 2-2 zone with a one man following Morris. A little bit dangerous when you have players like Orgel and Ozdoba in the game, but if Morris is just totally dominating you, that would make sense. A smart decision there by Levy to Coach Levy to consider it. The second free throw is no good, and the, ca uh, the coach's son, Levy, will make a pass off man's hand. <laughs> which goes to Shizgal, and here comes Mann. Mann taking the contact, they call the charge on number 11 Mann, onto number 11 Azdoba. Azdoba, while he may not be 100%, taking the contact, the sixth foul for Montreal in this first half. And Cooper will get the ball, Morris inbounds to Azdoba. Yeah, we see Montreal running in transition. One way to limit that a lot is maybe getting set and taking some charges, we saw that with Simcha Azdoba. Azdoba with Shizgal on him, passes to Ethan Morris, who has Fallenbaum on him. Morris to Mendelssohn. Mendelssohn being guarded by Kahn's, pass to Weinstein. Weinstein, they're going to call kickball off of Montreal. With 16 seconds on the shot clock, it'll stay with Cooper. They'll inbound from behind the basket, and coming into the game is Ezra Summer for Joel Weinstein. Looking for a set play nearly. Does not get the pass inside that he wanted. Instead, it's Mendelssohn out to Morris, who does not get the bounce off the rim. And here comes Shizgal looking to push. Shizgal slows it down, drops it off to Emmanuel Castile. Castile passes to Levy. Montreal sets a motion. Pass to Fallenbaum. They have a plenty of time on the shot clock. They want to use it. Pass to Shizgal. Shizgal with 
a, a bad pass, gets tipped, goes to Cooper. Morris pushing, Morris to Azdoba. Morris gets around, Chisgall throws it up. They call the foul. Azdoba uh, does not feel 100%, gets back to his feet. He is helped up by Dave Mashinsky, who is not in the media guide, as mentioned, for all of the Cooper games previously. Heiser and Mashinsky not in the media guide. It'll be two shots for Azdoba. Well, that's some great sportsmanship right there by Adam Shizgal. He saw Azdoba go hard at the hoop and take a little tumble there. Went there to make sure Azdoba was okay. Love to see that. Love to see the sportsmanship there by Shizgal. And not just sportsmanship, but sportsmanship in a game with a chance to take home a trophy, which you have. You want it. <laughs> like, you know, these teams think they've earned it. And the winner of this game will have earned it. With Levy, with Cooper guarding, uh, with Cooper guarding him, it's Morris. Morris on him. Pass to Castile. Castile, beautiful find inside, but a great shot by Azdoba taking away the shot from Shizgal, and the ball is going to Cooper. What a great job there from Azdoba. Yeah, Azdoba. We talked about his offense earlier, but it's really his defense so far that's been stepping up. He took a charge early, and that's another great defensive play by Simcha Azdoba. Not big, but smart. And he's the one who brings up the ball. Mashinsky sets a pick. Azdoba gets around. Azdoba, dangerous inside, is stripped by Kahn's. The ball goes to Levy. And Levy's shot is no good at the break. We will go to a quick commercial break. We'll be back in one minute. 19.13. And welcome back to the Max Stern Athletic Center for this Tier 4 championship between the 15 seeded Cooper Max of Tennessee and the Hebrew Academy of Montreal Heat. Montreal took care of business in the first quarter, outscoring Cooper 19-13, a high-scoring quarter which saw lots of good offensive moves, offensive baskets. Well, for the Montreal Heat, they gained a lot of experience. We were talking to Coach more than before the game, he said they gained, gained a lot of experience against Ida Crown, even though they didn't come out with a victory. And so they played much better in their second game, and they're looking a lot better, that's what he said. They came out a little, because of the aura of Saracek, the intensity, they were a little sluggish, a little nervous in the first game. They're looking better here so far. They are, and Orgel out of the game with two fouls. The regular starting lineup for Cooper, except that Summer is taking over Orgel's duties. The path is stolen by Fallenbaum. Fallenbaum driving to the basket. Kirstein sets up great defense, and Morris steals, and Morris will push. Morris, beautiful find inside to Summer, who lays it up and in to cut the Montreal lead to four. Well, once again there, Morris, with a simple pass, a simple move up transition, and finds the open man for a layup. Pass to Drazen in the corner. He has not had many opportunities early. He misses that one. Morris, the biggest man inside, brings down the rebound, and Morris, as usual, looking to push. Outside pass to Frieden, jumps around. Uh, takes the Montreal defenders off their feet. A swing pass to Azdoba, to Kirstein, the three is no good. Summer can't get the rebound. It's Frundlich, Vinny Frundlich is going to slow down the ball for the Heat. He sets up the offense, moves up Levy. Probably Levy will want to set a pick somewhere here. It's a pass, pass to Azale. We have a foul called on the floor on Cooper. That is just their fourth personal, and so we inbounds from behind the basket. Brittany Fernlich, he could be an X-Factor here today. Beautiful inbounds pass from Fernlich to Drazen, as you're mentioning his name. Brings the lead back up to six. Frieden wanted to push but didn't have any men. He just brings it to Azdoba and he will set up the offense. Pass to Kirshin at the top of the key out to Frieden. Frieden on the left wing with Drazen on him. Gets inside to Azdoba who wants summer. Doesn't have the pass instead. He air balls, rebounded by Kirstein, who controlled the inside there, cutting the lead to four and bringing up the ball for Montreal from the passes to Fallenbaum. Fallenbaum crossed to Drazen. 
who is manned up by Morris. Morris takes away the ball, wants to do it himself. Morris all the way, and he is fouled by Frumlich. What an amazing play there by Morris to man up Drazen and say, get out of here. Well, Ethan Morris using his complete frame. I, th I think he's 6'3", using every single inch of that to stop that play and then push the ball into transition. We've seen Ethan Morris do that a few times already in this game. I don't think he's going to shy away from that. Making his case as the best player on the court, he hits his first free throw and cuts the lead to three. Coach Levy was worried a little bit about Drazen getting into foul trouble, saying that if Drazen got into foul trouble, they would be in big trouble. Instead, the one in early foul trouble is from the West 2. Morris knocks down both. And it's a two-point game. Coming back into the game for Montreal is Mann, who, as you mentioned, was excellent on Thursday. Drazen will bring up the ball. It's a shorter Frieden on him. Passes to Mann. Mann out to Frundlich. Frundlich to Levy. Good passing, but that one not a great one from Mann to Drazen. Drazen recovers. Drazen takes it all the way, and it's a four-point game once again. Well, we saw Drazen be aggressive there. So that's only four points for Drazen. He's going to start selling in, I'm sure in this rest of this first half. He looks confident defensively, and just because he hasn't had a lot of points on the offensive side doesn't mean that he's not in the game. Beautiful move by Frieden inside. Can't get the layup to go as Doba can't get it. It's tipped by Frumlich off the backboard to Drazen. Drazen is pushing. Drazen, beautiful feed. The layup is no good from Azale. The foul is called on Montreal. But uh, what a beautiful feed from Drazen. Drazen showing off a little bit there with the behind-the-back pass. That was... Beautiful pass by Yoni Drazen. Azule couldn't get the light, couldn't get the layup to go, but nevertheless, a great pass and open look. And he is the one who committed the foul, and because that is Montreal's ninth foul, it'll be a one and one, one more foul, and uh, Cooper will be in the double bonus. And Kirstein, who does a lot of small things right, Coach Noak said he is so smart, doing everything small right. Misses the front end, but it's rebounded by Azdoba, who also does a lot of things right. Azdoba lays it in. It's a two-point game. Well, that's a big man move by Azdoba. Not a Crops big man, board. but a big man move. As the guts go, heat chance continue, and Drazen makes a small mistake traveling. The f one of the first mistakes we've seen from Drazen in this game. The only Drazen has been excellent so far here today. That was his first mistake, but he's clearly leading this team even though he may not be the leading scorer. Coach Noakes calling out the play, but she wants to run as Morris brings up the ball with Drazen on him. Morris, a little bit of nice dribbling, sets up the offense, passes out to Pizer. Pizer gets it to Frieden. Frieden, risky pass to Azdoba, 11 on 11, man on Azdoba. Nice matchup we have. Azdoba feeds to Morris. Morris looking inside, doesn't have anyone, 14 on the shot clock. Morris, beautiful feed this time inside, and it's blocked, blocked, blocked by Frumlich. From the block, Kirstein, Drazen is pushing. And now he slows down and he drops out for a three, which he knocks down to give Montreal the five point lead. Wow, what a turn of events there. Blocked by Freyne Lecha, Yoni, Drazen hits a three. That's a five point swing we saw there. Huge two possessions there. But Morris, Morris with a feed to Azdoba. Azdoba inside to Kirstein. The ball is off Kirstein. It goes to Montreal. Yeah, well, I think Cooper was a little bit. A little bit struck there by what just happened. They thought they were about to tie the game up, but now they're down five. A five-point swing indeed, and in games like this, five-point swings can be the turning point or the differentiating factor. Morris not all the way up on Drazen, who thought about taking the three and doesn't take it. Instead, he drops it off to Benny Frumlich, who passes to Cohen. Cohen inside to Mann. Mann is blocked by Morris. He manned him up. Here comes Frieden, pushing down the other end to Morris, who feeds inside to Orgel. Wow. What beautiful passing from Cooper with four to go in the half. It's a three-point game. Pretty, pretty playing there by Ethan Morris. First gets the block, then he finds an open man. Ethan Morris putting on his show for us in this first quarter. Wow is all I can say as Mann passes to Drazen. Drazen with 20 on the shot clock. Gets it to Levy, who feeds it inside to Mann. Mann cannot get the layup to go. Orgel, who's back in the game, gets the rebound. He gives it to Azdoba. Azdoba slows it down, gives it to Morris at the top of the key. Morris finds Azdoba. Azdoba for three is no good. Rebound inside by the bigger Orgel. Orgel lays it in. His presence is known. We talked about Orgel in the pregame. Orgel with the size. We expect him to get a lot of offensive rebounds and, and layups inside. There you go. Finally gets one. Orgel's on the board. I expect to see more of that in the second half. 
And up with the ball comes Benny Freundlich. Freundlich passes to Drazen. Drazen for three. Drazen off the back iron, no good. Pa gets to Morris. Morris, as usual, will push. Morris looking to see who he has on Drazen. Goes inside. Little bit of a loss of ball control. The ball goes to Orgel off the missed layup. They're going to call the ball off of Kirstein, and it goes to Montreal. And Montreal will sub back in Ethan Fallenbaum and Adam Shizgal. Man on Levy, take a seat. Well, Orgel was limited in the first quarter because of his two fouls. We're seeing him get some more action here and starting to make a big impact. It's another offensive rebound by Orgel. Couldn't get that one to go. From Montreal, they need to do a better job boxing out if they want to limit Orgel. He comes out of the game because of his two fouls. Do not want to have three in the first half, but wanted to get some impact as we have a three taken by Frundlich. It's just short. The rebound. Shizgal cannot get the roll, but he does get two foul shots. Talked about the box out just, just before. That's Adam Shizgal with a nice box out, grabs the board. Montreal, even though they only have, they, they have one quote-unquote freshman who is a ninth grader, but he's, at, he's, at, he's when I say quote-unquote, it's because he's technically a sophomore. Half of their team are sophomores, which means that they're in Montreal juniors, which means they're 10th graders, and half of their team are seniors, in other words, 11th graders. They run a deep bench, and Shizgal is just one of the many players off the bench who can score. Can't get either of the free throws to go, but he gets his own second miss. Cooper not boxing out the shooter, and it's two points. He makes up for his missed free throws by getting the two, and Frieden looked for the inside pass to Orgel. Instead, it was off of Kahn's, who defended Orgel well, with 29 on the shot clock, it will stay with Cooper, and of course, Morris will be the one inbounding. Well, what effort that was by Adam Shizgal. We've seen that a few times this Sarachek tournament where the free throw shooter grabs the board. And a beautiful feed from Morris inside. Kirstein can't get the roll, but he'll go to line for two, and we've seen a back and forth game very close throughout the entire first half. If both teams scoring offensively, not really sluggish. Unexpected for the 9 a.m. start. We maybe thought that these teams would come out a little sluggish. It's a little early in the morning, but both teams coming out firing so far. Yeah, in fact, not even a 9 a.m. start, an 8.30 start. Excuse and me. No, no, it's just more reason to be tired. But when you see the Tier 4 trophy being brought behind, behind where you're inbounding the ball, it just changes the way you see the game. The second free throw is no good, but a pass is intercepted by Frieden. Frieden drops it off to Morris. Morris passes to Kirstein. Kirstein to Frieden. Frieden will set up the offense. Looks for Azdoba. Azdoba, as always, drives inside. No charge to be taken there because Azdoba only took two dribbles, laid it in to tie the game. Montreal will take a timeout with 2.04 to go in the half. Cooper has come back from an early deficit to tie the game. Yep, well, Cooper, they play their best when they're when they're playing up tempo. We're seeing them kind of maybe slow Montreal down a little bit. Montreal's playing a faster game than, than Cooper has played so far. They're slowing down the ball on offense, getting open looks. Right there is a perfect example of that as Tim Klausoba was found cutting across, laid it in gently, and tied the game up. Yeah, very interesting because I mentioned before Montreal plays with the 24-second shot clock, and therefore when they move to Sarachek, and now they have to go with the 35-second shot clock, they're not used to taking as high percentage shots as they do in Montreal. So you would expect the team to be ready to slow the ball down, but they have not much so far, and obviously whatever they're doing is working. Yeah, yeah they're certainly playing very well so far here on offense. Levy passes to Fallonbaum. Fallonbaum driving inside. He's fouled on the floor. I'm almost certain he's fouled on the floor, but they don't, doesn't, they're not pointing to the floor as if it's going to be two shots. Well, they don't point to the well, floor. It looks like it is. Yeah, they know. It looks like actually no. They're going to give him. Yeah, they're going to give him two shots. I don't know 100 percent about that, but doesn't matter because two shots are about to be taken. The first one is no good for Fallonbaum. I'm seeing Oracle check back into this game. Looks like he comes in for <coughs> Mendelssohn. So we'll see how that plays a role in the last two minutes of this first half. Yeah, you know, Coach told him, "Listen, Nussie, you're our biggest guy inside, but do not foul." Do not make silly mistakes. Both free throws missed, and here comes Cooper. Ethan Morris hands the ball off to Azdoba. Azdoba setting out a pick from Orgel. Orgel doesn't even get there by the time Azdoba decides to lay it up. The layup is no good. Levy's getting trapped by Azdoba and Morris, who passes the ball off of Morris's inside to get it inside to Kahn's. Kahn's passes uh, pass out to Fallonbaum. Fallonbaum driving inside, kicks out to Drazen, kicks out to Levy. Levy doesn't want the three. Instead, he passes cross 
two, Fallenbaum, Fallenbaum being knocked out by Frieden. Good defense by Frieden. Drazen gets to look, does not want it. Instead, mans up on Morris, and they call the ball off of Drazen, who is not so happy, but he'll have to be happy because Montreal, even though they are the 19th seed, has completely stuck with Cooper throughout the early going. I know they don't view themselves as the 19th seed, but they, we are in for a excellent game. Obviously, has been an excellent game so far, as once again, the Montreal fans get loud. Yeah, I was talking to Aitan Levy before the game. He said, we definitely thought we were under and Right now, we've got a chance to prove that. They absolutely do have a chance to prove it, as the air ball is taken by Shizgal, and Shizgal does not want to push. Instead, he just simply drops it off to Fallenbaum. Levy, as you were just mentioning, Levy, beautiful feed inside to Drazen. Drazen can't get the layup to go. You know Morris is going to push here. Morris pushing, gets it to Frieden, who might try the open three. Instead, he doesn't. Instead, he drops it off to Morris. Morris goes all the way inside. A beautiful layup, gets it to go. Coach Levy is going to call timeout. There's basically no difference between the shot clock and game clock, so this might just be a hold for one situation. Yeah, when Morris is using his size on last position to get over the defender and lay it in. That's what 6 3 can do for you guys. Yeah, 6 3 is big, and Cooper, with that lay in, has taken their first lead since. Very early on? Yeah, yep, Cooper, I believe that. Yeah, they had a 6-4 lead early on. But so Montreal had a big lead. Then, no. Cooper worked their way back, and now it's 30-28 for this Montreal team. Nothing to, be, nothing to be too worried about. You know what you're capable of. You know that you can definitely compete with this team. So just about making this last possession count and then heading into the half on a high note. Yeah, it's the same sort of thing we actually saw in the Cooper against Barron game. We saw... Cooper get out to early lead and Barron just take over the middle part of the first half and then Cooper take the lead late. So the same sort of story here in the tier for a championship as Coach Levy has called this play. He's going to go with Drazen, Levy, Fallenbaum, Frundlich, and Azale, his starting five. Levy will inbound the ball. Drazen bringing the ball up slowly makes me think that they are going to hold for one. Moore is backing down as if to say, okay, you can do it. Fallenbaum passes to Azale, Azale to Frumlich, Frumlich to Levy. Good passing on the outside of the arc. Drazen with 20 on both, on both clocks gets it to Frumlich, Frumlich to Azale. Azale to Fallenbaum. Fallenbaum driving inside, takes a nice shot which doesn't get the roll. It's rebounded by Cooper, the tip to Orgel, he's got six seconds. Morris looks at the shot clock, knows it, slows the ball down, knows he's going to take the last shot, and it looks like he travels and he does at the buzzer. That'll be the end of the first half, an excellent tier four championship so far. Cooper leading Montreal 30-28. to We will send you up to the Step It Up halftime show. Enjoy. Reading, math, and English tutoring 
If he has a bar mitzvah coming up in the fall or winter, we have bar mitzvah lessons with our camp rabbi. was to attract serious basketball players from all over the world. You're welcome here, we will develop you. As much as Step It Up is an intense basketball training camp, and it is, we have a great off-the-court curriculum designed. From everyday electives, we have a think, work, and chill approach. Every day from 2 to 4 p.m., your sons can be involved in everything from SAT prep, ACT prep, reading, math, and English tutoring. If he has a bar mitzvah coming up in the fall or winter, we have bar mitzvah lessons with our camp rabbi. That's the think approach. If he wants to work, we have basketball private training, we have more speed training, pool workouts, maybe tennis, maybe golf off campus, football, soccer, baseball. If he wants to chill, hammocks, ping pong, pool, read a book, think, work, and chill. Welcome back to the Max Stern Athletic Center for the second half of action in the Tier 4 Championship between the Cooper Max and the Hebrew Academy of Montreal Heat. Step it up at basketball halftime show. You mentioned earlier one of the top players for Montreal, Ethan Fallenbaum, a Step It Up alum. Now, with the two teams coming out of the locker room, just two minutes to go before halftime. We had Coach Noakes for uh, Cooper coming up to the booth to talk to us a little bit before they went into the locker room. Roey, can you tell us exactly what they said? What he, what he said? Well, he talked about Nussi Orgo. We asked him about Nussi Orgo picking up those two fouls early. He said he might have, what he did in the first half a little bit is that he subbed Nussi Orgo offense for defense a little bit with, with Mendelssohn and Frieden. And he said, notably about Frieden, that Frieden was being beat back door a few times. 
So he subbed in Mendelssohn. Mendelssohn did a better job. And he might stick with Mendelssohn if Mendelssohn continues to keep up his good defensive work. Mendelssohn has done an excellent job. He has done an excellent job. And now just to look at how the first half went. Because Hebrew Academy was up, I believe, 19-10. to 10. The first quarter ended 19-13. And now it's 30-28 to 28 in favor of Cooper, who has make their way back, made their way back into this game and has taken their first lead since the opening minutes in the last minute of the first half. Well, Cooper... I think it all started with Ethan Morris. Really, we saw it in the in the second quarter. Ethan Morris would continue to keep pushing the ball up the court. We saw that how successful that was. Didn't always end with the Morris basket, but Morris constantly found his teammates who had open looks. And that's all because Ethan Morris was aggressive and took the ball up the court quickly, eagerly, and ready to make a pass. Dead right, Morris loves to push the ball in. Kirstein, the leading scorer for Cooper, due to Morris's passing. Okay. And, yeah, yeah, go ahead, please. Kirstein has also done an excellent job. Morris has done a good job finding him, but Kirstein laying it in every time, making good looks, making nice shots. Nothing to be undermined about. So as Cooper already on the court, Montreal about to come out of their huddle, Coach Levy telling them, let's get this. We got 16 more minutes of action to go. We're down to play hard, play to win. Could Levy. come down to who wants it more here as we're locked up here in this second half. Levy will inbound the ball for Montreal and he'll get it to Frundlich who will set up the offense as Montreal now going from our left to right. Frundlich passes the ball to Fallenbaum. Fallenbaum with freedom on him. Gets it drains in at the top of the key to Levy. So good swinging early, good passing early for Montreal at the top area of the key to outside. A little move inside from Fallenbaum. Couldn't get it to go. Azale got the rebound of the air ball. He air balls, and here comes Azdoba down the court. Drazen on him. Gets past Drazen. Azdoba lays it up and in. Azdoba, he may not be 100%, but he is on fire as Morris steals the inbound pass from Frundlich into Drazen. What an amazing heads up play by Morris. A 4 0 run in the first 30 seconds of the half. Gives Cooper the six point lead, and Drazen might want to slow it down. Instead, a double kick out. The shot is missed by Montreal. It was missed by Fallenbaum. The ball is off at Montreal, and Coach Levy is not happy early. Well, Ethan Moore showing off his defensive skills so far in this third quarter. First, Azoba showed off his speed on that nice little layup, and now Morris back to back forcing turnovers. Not just defensive, but heads up as a beautiful feed from Frieden inside to Morris. Just no good, and here comes Montreal pushing. Fallenbaum could not get from the inside, so instead he kicks out the Drazen, who passed to Levy, and Levy is going to draw the foul. Are they going to call the foul on Orgel? Well, I think Levy's upset there because he wanted, he got hit, and then he went up with the shot and got, actually got the layup to go. They're going to call a foul on the floor, which means points don't count, and he won't head to the line. But a big foul at that, as Orgel is going to have to come out of the game with his third foul, and Coach Noak saying, no. No, come on, can't do that. We talked about this during halftime, you can't do that. As Drazen shakes Morris but couldn't get the shot to go. Mendelssohn, ball goes off him, stays with Montreal. Well, with Norgal out here in this third quarter, Montreal has the ability to get their back, okay, to get their way back into this game. The let's go heat chance ring once again. The inbound pass goes to Drazen. Drazen is fouled by Frieden as he was trying to steal the ball. And two fouls in the first 117 of the half on Cooper. Well, Frieden saw Drazen, didn't see him from behind, snuck up behind him, almost poked the ball away there, but got called for a foul. And it should be Montreal to inbound the ball. Azale gets inside, and Azale is fouled, I believe, on by Morris on the shot. And he will go to the line for two. Cooper, they're picking up foul after foul here. Once they hit seven, it will be a one and one scenario for Montreal. They're at three, and it's been just more than a minute so far. Yeah, not the best thing for, uh, for Cooper to have so many fouls early. Actually, the foul not on Morris. It is called on Kershey, and that's a second. So not, not like Orgel. Now, now he doesn't have three, but still something to keep an eye out for. More to keep an eye out for is the number of personal fouls Cooper has in the second half. But both foul shots are missed, and at that, both re uh, the rebound is taken by Fallenbaum, who got in over Morris as Montreal sets up their offense with 25 on the shot clock. He has some sort of a lane. Morris playing excellent defense on Frumlich. Turns his back, then swats the ball away. Beautiful feed. Beautiful feed from Azdoba to Kirstein, but Kirstein blocked. Here comes Frumlich on the other end. Morris can't get the block. The tip back from Frumlich is no good. 
Here comes Cooper. They're pushing lots of fast paced action. Azdoba going right to the basket. Azdoba around Levy. Count it and one. Azdoba with a nice hesitation move. Leads it to a move inside and gets gets an and one basket to go. Azdoba really picking up his play in the third quarter. And Cooper, in just under two minutes, has started off the half on a 6 0 run. Yeah, Cooper starting off the third quarter very, very strong. Very ready to play. Seems like they really want this one. Azdoba gets the roll from the free throw shot and the lead is up to nine. Montreal's gonna have to get back into this game. Drazen, if there, I mean, if there's anyone to bring up the, to bring up the ball, it's Drazen, if there's anyone to get Montreal back into the game, it's Drazen. Let's see who will be the one to get Montreal back into the game, if anyone, as Levy with Mendelssohn on him, kicks it out to Drazen. Drazen driving inside, Drazen all the way. Drazen can't get the roll. It's rebounded by Azdoba. Azdoba pushing, he wants Frieden, but back was Azale to cover the inside. Instead, he does kick it out to Frieden but not for an inside pass. Gets it to Azdoba, gets it to Morris. Morris sets up the offense. Morris with a smaller Fallon Valm on him, tries to pass it to Mendelssohn, can't get it. Gets it to Frieden instead, gets it to Azdoba, who gets it to Morris, and with 12 seconds on the shot clock, Morris will once again set up the play. Morris inside, takes it nearly himself. Instead, he drops it off to Kirstein. The play's been working all day. Kirstein has 13 points, and Cooper's lead is 11. Oh, what a feed that was there by Ethan Morris. Going up in the air and dishing it off perfectly to Kirstein, who laid it in. One of these Montreal players is going to have to take over. Levy, is he the one? Nope, kicks it out to Azale. Azale to Drazen. Drazen forces Morris all the way up on him. Morris, good defense once again. The kick out from Azale. Azale to Shizgal. Shizgal gets it to Azale with seven on the shot clock. Levy knows he's got to do something. Levy takes it himself. No good. And a beautiful pass from Ethan Morris to Frieden, the runner. The shot's good. Will Montreal take a timeout? They might want to. On an 11-0 run is Cooper in the first three and a half minutes of this quarter. Yep, Cooper has been unstoppable so far in this third quarter. And Montreal, he don't seem to have any answer so far. Ballenbaum is going to kick out the Drazen. Drazen for three to get Montreal on fire. No good. Shizgal. Shakes off Osdoba. Shizgal no good. Shizgal gets his own rebound. The ball is tipped around. It goes from Drazen to Shizgal. Shizgal gets it to Fallenbaum. Fallenbaum inside, puts it up and in, and Montreal has points in the second half. Finally, Montreal, he get on the board, and that started with an Adam Shizgal offensive board. That could be a huge break there for the Heat, and just what they need to get back. Morris running the court. Morris thinks about kicking out the Freedom. Instead, they call the offensive foul on Morris. Levy was set. That's a great job there by Aton Levy, one of the leaders of this team. Gets, gets set, gets positioned, and takes a huge charge on Ethan Morris. We know that coach was going to stress taking charges. The one who took it the most so far, at least, is his own son. So, Montreal with a chance to cut into this Cooper lead. And already aware of the clock, Drazen will let the ball roll all the way to half court before picking it up, and Morris backs down. Drazen handling the ball. Kicks it out to Levy. Levy, back to Drazen. Does Drazen want the three? He does. Morris can't get all the way up on him, but the three is no good, and it's rebound by Kirstein, and Morris, you know he's going to push. He gets around Drazen. Morris, beautiful pass to, to uh, Azdoba, and Azdoba with the little floater, and Cooper's lead is back up to 13. Ball nearly stolen by Frieden. Instead, Montreal is going to push. It's inside. It's man. Man, another time that Montreal could not get the roll. But great heads are played by Drazen. Drazen picks off the pass. Drazen lays it up. He can't get it to go. They're going to call the ball off Drazen. Man says no. Ref says yes. Ball goes to Cooper. Now Drazen getting a little frustrated. His shots aren't falling right now. For Drazen to stay aggressive. Shooters shot. Shooters. Hopefully for Drazen, the shots will fall. You're not going to get... It's not like you're not going to get the roll the entire game. You're going to get the roll sometimes. This Frieden exactly right. takes an interesting shot. Didn't like it. Doesn't go. Levy pushes. Levy does he have Azale. What a fine! Threads the needle, but Azale can't get it in. They're going to call the foul. It's going to be a foul on Drazen. Offensive foul going back to Cooper. Okay, that was a beautiful find, but they've got to hit their layups. That was a beautiful find there. Yeah, Montreal struggling to hit their layups. They're, it's not like they're getting... It's not like they're not getting open looks. They've had the opportunities on the offensive end. They're getting layups, easy looks. Fortunately, just nothing's dropping. Not only is nothing dropping, but they're going to have to call timeout to get stuff to drop, to get their heads back in the game. They were only down two going into halftime. They had a 19-10 lead. 
Since then, Cooper has outscored Montreal 33 to 11, which is just absurd. And in this half alone, they're outscoring Montreal 13 to 2. And they're doing that all without Nussi Orgo. Nussi Orgo has been on the bench for most of this quarter, so it's been truly impressive how Cooper has taken this 13-point lead. And just now, I'd like to give a shout out to all the Montreal fans who are watching in Israel. I know they're they're supportive on their team. And just now, Jeffrey Owen has walked into the building. Jeffrey Owen, a Cooper legend. Joining Caleb Malofsky, I'm sure another Cooper legend. I'm sure he's happy with what he's seeing so far. Knowing that his former teammates are perhaps on their way to a Tier 4 championship, but that's not what Montreal wants. Montreal does not want to lose another Tier 4 championship for the second time in three years, so they're going to have to come back into this game. As Morris with another beautiful find. This one's to, this one's to Mendelssohn. What a beautiful find from Morris. Cooper has the biggest lead of the game at 15, and the Heat do not have any answers. They can't box in one Morris because Morris is just finding everyone. And Morris is certainly showing us what he can do passing. He's got great core vision. Drazen lays it in, up, no good. He does not get it to go. And, and again, Morris finding the home core, home run pass all the way down the court. But Frieden, once again, not taking the best shot possible. Getting pushed out. Great horizontal defense by Montreal. Fallenbaum, baseline jumper, floater, doesn't go, just air balls it. Montreal not taking the best shots. They're not getting their rolls. They have two points in the last six minutes. And Ozdoba is picking out man. It's looking very good for Cooper. Very good for Cooper right now. A beautiful pass to Kirstein. Kirstein, he doesn't get the roll. They're going to call the foul. Offensive foul. They're going to call it on Ozdoba. Ozdoba smiling. Morris, not smiling. A little, a little, a little bit of a smile from Morris. Uh, more of a no, just don't do that sort of thing. Let's, Let's not make the mistakes. Morris. Taking on Fallenbaum all by himself. Forces him into a bad shot. Gets the rebound. His mouth open says, oh my god, not sure why. Morris, beautiful pass to Azdoba. Azdoba will set up the offense. Nearly picked off by Fallenbaum. Morris, watching Fallenbaum, does not let it get picked off. Another beautiful find. The backdoor passes are working to perfection. Ethan Morris must have double-digit assists. Cooper has a 17-point lead. Ethan Morris showing us what he could do. He looks like Rajon Rondo out there, but a 6-3 version of him. Man, annoyed, does not get the layup. Morris sees man behind him, says, okay, I've got a five on four, and I like to push anyway, so I'll get it to Azdoba. Azdoba is going to slow it down, get it to Kirstein in the corner. Kirstein tries to feed Morris, but after it goes off a leg, it goes back to him. He gets it to Azdoba. Azdoba can't get it to go. Rebound my man. Man's going to push. He might have Levy. He tries to thread a needle. The needle is closed by Morris, but the foul is called on Cooper. It'll be Cooper's sixth foul, and they're going to call this one on Frieden, his third. And we've seen uh, Fried yeah, we've seen Frieden come out of the game on multiple occasions. Frieden is probably the one coming out of the game here for Mashinsky. He is, as well as Mendelssohn, Weinstein replacing him. Well, we're seeing Fornlich looks like he's going to get the ball. Fornlich. Coach said he would be an X factor for the game. He's one of the team captains and team leaders. So if anybody could get their team back in the game, it could be Freundlich. Someone's got to hit some shots. Whether it's Freundlich or Drazen, someone's got to hit their shots. Drazen kicks it out. Kicked out to Kahn's. Back to Drazen. Drazen driving inside. Right at Morris. Morris, no. Blocks him. What a play. Ethan Morris. Morris has been unbelievable here today. He has just taken over this game. And with a five-second differential, Cooper could mostly hold for one, or they can just run a normal offense and find the best shot, which is, I'm sure, what they'll do. Morris wanted it inside. Azdoba didn't see him. And instead, Morris looks at the shot clock and says, all right, let me just set up. Let, let me just set it up. Let me just set it up. Gets around Levy. Backs it out. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Morris crosses over Levy. Gets it to Azdoba with six on the shot clock. Azdoba driving in. Azdoba, beautiful underneath the Kirchin, who is blocked. Who is blocked. Blocked by Frundlich. There's, there was one second on the shot clock. They've just run it out, and they give the ball to Montreal. Kahn's is going to have 6.7 seconds with Montreal inbounding the ball to try to get some points. It goes to Frundlich. Frundlich kicks it out to Levy. Levy driving inside. He'll take the last shot himself. What a great job by Morris. I don't believe what I'm seeing right now with Morris. Get forcing the jump ball, regardless of the case, even if the jump ball was going in Montreal's direction, it would have been a smart play, as there would have only been 0.6 for them to get off a shot. Instead, because it goes in Cooper's direction, it'll be Morris with the inbound. Morris will just inbound the ball to Kirstein, and that'll be the end of the third quarter. Dominant quarter by Cooper. They outscore Montreal 17-2. We're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be back in one minute for the last quarter of the Tier 4 Championship game.
and welcome back to the Max Turn Athletic Center for the fourth quarter of the Tier 4 Champion Game. A trophy is on the line, and Cooper has just absolutely taken over this game. A 17-2 outscoring of Montreal in the third quarter. They're on a 37-11 run, and Montreal looks done. Can they get back in this game? Well, Montreal, certainly there's time left on the clock, so it's definitely not over, but they're going to have to basically... They're going to have to try to conserve Ethan Morris. He's been absolutely unbelievable so far, especially in that third quarter. We saw Stefan's passing everything. The kid has taken over the game. This time, though, Montreal gets the roll. The bench gets up. It's a two-pointer and one. And Drazen will head to the line. Drazen somewhat shut down in this game. Only now has 12 points. But he'll go to the line with a chance to cut into the Cooper lead a little bit. With every run begins a layup. Well, Montreal, or at least most runs at least. The, the, the YU Max tend to start their runs with life for layups. Montreal, they scored two points in this third quarter and now they already have three. A beautiful feed from Osdo to Osdoba from Mashinsky, but he is blocked. Morris is able to corral the pass off the rebound. He gets it inside to Weinstein. Weinstein lays it up. It's no good, but an effort inside from Weinstein. The kick out to from Mashinsky to Morris. Morris is fouled going up for the shot and he will head to the line for two. Yeah. Morris. I'm not sure if Morris can over be this game. I'm not sure if Morris can be stopped right now. He's just he's playing great on all cylinders of the game. Morris. <laughs> he's playing with different intentions. Cooper last in the tournament two years ago. They fell in the tier two championship. Morris wants to bring home some hardware. He doesn't care if it's tier two or tier four. He just wants to bring home a trophy to show off for the team and his efforts. And they've got a 15, now 16 point lead. Ethan Morris playing like one of the top talents so far. We know what he was capable of and now we're seeing it right in front of our eyes. Levy to Drazen, Drazen to Foundbound. They've got to get something going soon. Cohen is in the game. Someone's got to step up for Montreal. Someone's got to step up. Is it Levy the coach's son? No, because Morris is there for another block. He's just been totally dominant. Drazen can't get the jumper to go. They're not taking the best shots. Morris is pushing. He doesn't care what the score is. He just wants to score. But now, realizing he doesn't have numbers and is now and now being trapped, makes a mistake. He does make the smart play though, as he fouls Frundlich after making the mistake. He took the he backed the ball back out because. He did not have uh, anything inside. That said, generally a smart move to foul. Not sure if it's the best move here. I stay. I correct myself. It depends if Montreal can knock down the free throws because they have a one and one. Free throw shooting could be important here. If Cooper is able to hit their free throws, unlikely that Montreal is able to get back into this game. But of course, we saw. We saw Cooper struggle with the line actually in their first game against Barron, so more free throw shooting could lead to a Montreal comeback. Can't get the second one to go, and Morris grabs the rebound. Morris has brought the ball up the court quickly all game. Will he slow it down now or bring it up quickly again? Well, he does bring it up quickly, but he's picked by Fallenbaum. Morris back on defense. Missed by Fallenbaum. Rebound by Frundlich. He misses. Gets his own rebound. Puts it back up. Gets the roll. And the lead is cut to 13. And the defense chants are going to begin once again. Morris, not the best pass to Mashinsky. Drazen on him by the end line. Kept in by Ozdoba. His foot just inside. The foul by Frundlich. A frustration foul. Coach Levy is upset. It'll just be an inbounds pass from the side. Just the fifth foul on Montreal. Well, we're seeing Frenlich start to get really aggressive here in this fourth quarter. He could be the one who's stepping it up here for Montreal. Benjamin Cohen on Ozdoba. Ozdoba driving inside, kicks it out. Ball is off of Mendelssohn. It goes out of bounds. Levy will inbound the ball. Montreal on a little bit of a run. A little bit of a run. They've cut into this Cooper lead. It's just 13. Yeah, well, they were down 17 to start a half. It's now 13 point to start the quarter. Excuse me. Now it's a 13 point deficit. Could be down to as low as 10 after this possession. Drazen with shot clock awareness and game clock awareness. There with the shot clock or with the game clock awareness. Smart play. Just letting the ball go. He takes the three from the corner. He just can't get it to go. The rim has not been their friend today. Multiple shots just not going for Montreal. Orgel's back in the game. 
Montreal not accounting for him. The beautiful pass to pass to Orgel inside, easy lay-in. Free points, not getting back on defense. Getting back on defense is something which Coach Levy stressed when we talked to him. Not something which they did well there. Montreal looking to cut back the deficit to 13. The shot is no good. They're going to call the foul. They're going to call left. the foul. Yeah, on front left. Just a six foul once again on Montreal. Not a one and one yet, but the way this game is going, Montreal may start to utilize the one and one. Coach Noakes is going to keep Orgel in the game. He's got just three fouls. And we saw Norgel, Orgel with a very nice patient play last time around. He caught the pass down low, saw the defender coming, put up a little pump fake, let the defender fly over him and knocked it in. And Frontlich has fouled out of the game. That was his fifth foul. Shizgal is going to come on to the court. I said before I, 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 I'm surprised that Orgel is still in the game. Not because he has a lot of fouls, but because he has struggled a little bit from the line. And in this sort of situation where Montreal is going to want to foul you, they're going to foul your worst free throw shooter. While Orgel has been dominant inside of this tournament, he has not been great from the line. But Orgel stays on the court. He's one of the best players, so Coach Noakes is going to keep him on regardless of the situation, even if it, it may be a one-on-one -one sort of situation well, coming I up. I wouldn't be surprised to see sort of like a hack, hack a shack sort of thing here if they foul Orgel on Hack purpose. and Orgel, yeah. Levy with an excellent play, kicking the ball away. He would have gone to Orgel for the easy two. Very clever play there by Ethan Levy. Knowing that he was outmanned 3-1. to one. Man is not in the game, but he was outmanned. Ha, ha, ha. Kirstein gets it to Azdova. Azdova takes it all the way. And Cooper is not letting up. They do not want to give Montreal any hope. The let's go heat chance ring up once more from the Montreal fan section as Levy nearly blocked by Morris. The shot nearly goes in but doesn't. Morris being trapped by Drazen. Morris nearly travels. Morris tries to get it to Azdoba. The ball goes off of Frieden. Will the referees call it? No. Yes, they will. They correctly overturned their call. The ball did go off Frieden. Always like to see the referees talking to each other to make sure that they get the correct call. In this case, they do, as we saw it right in front of us. Yeah, I believe he, they refs did an excellent job there. They got it right. And now Montreal... Time of the, is of the essence here for Montreal here. Just five on the clock. Down 17. They need to average an outscoring of Cooper by more than three points down the way. That means a lot of twos and a lot of threes and a lot of points and good defense as Shizgal gets fouled for the foul. That means that instead of a 1-1, it will be two. And any Cooper foul from now on will mean two shots for Montreal. So I'm sure Coach Noakes is telling his team, do not foul. If they're going to get points, let them score it themselves. Do not foul them and give them free throws. Exactly right. One of the best ways to get into a game, free throws. Free throws take zero seconds, actually. So, As we see right now, 4.54. Let's see how much time comes off on this free throw. You were exactly right. 4.54 still on the clock. No time taken off by that free throw. Anyways, the lead is 16 for Cooper. Kirstein has the ball. He wants to get it to Morris. A dangerous pass to Morris. Morris gets it to Frieden. Not as dangerous of a pass. Frieden with the beautiful feed to Morris. Morris with the beautiful feed to Orgel. Orgel can't get it to go. Morris looking for the rebound. He can't get it. The small man. Man brings the ball up the court. Beautiful pass to Drazen. Drazen's going to go all the way. Kirstein is going to get called for the foul. I believe they'll call it on the shot. It'll be two shots for Drazen at the line. And no time will come off the clock. 4.36 to go. Orgel, fourth foul. Expect him to come out here for perhaps uh, Mendelssohn? Could be Mendelssohn, it looks like. Nope, instead it's going to be Pizer coming into the game for Cooper, number 15. Once again, Montreal Heat getting to the line. Game's not over. There's still plenty of time left. More than four and a half minutes to go. We've seen much larger deficits Cer been uh, taken on. Certainly. If the Heat stay aggressive, make some, make a couple more shots and play some tight defense, we could see them work their way back into this game. The only thing I'm worried about from Montreal perspective is that they're just not getting all the way back on defense because they're trying to steal the ball. This time the layup is no good. Man. Pushing the ball. Man not afraid of Azdoba. Gets it around the other 11. Drazen gets behind the three-point line. Doesn't want the three. Instead, he drives inside. Drazen lays it up. Again, they don't get the bounce. Again, they cannot get their shots to go. The shots are just not falling. The ball flies into the stands. It remains with Cooper as Ethan Morris comes to take the ball with 31 on the shot clock and 417 on the game clock and a 14-point lead. Pass nearly stolen. Nearly stolen by Shizgal. Azdoba gets it instead. Beautiful pass to Kirstein. And underneath, the foul is called. Pizer will head to line for two. Cooper 
is just doing the simple things right. Kirstein is doing the simple things right. Morris is doing the simple things right. They're executing their game plan to perfection. In this sort of situation, Montreal trying to steal the ball. They're being somewhat overly aggressive, and they're leading to easy twos or free throws for Cooper. Pizer seeing what I believe is his first action of this championship game. He has checked in to both of their previous games. Cooper, as usual, uses their entire bench. He knocks down his first free throw. Doesn't get the second. But it's rebounded by Azdoba, who will take it out, realizing that there's a new 35-second shot clock. A chance to ice the game here for Cooper if they can get some points and run out the clock. Kirstein gets it inside to Morris. Morris lays it up and in. Montreal has not done anything to stop Morris. It's a 17-point lead. The quarter has been tied. 47-30 coming in. 56-39 right now. Levy going all the way. Levy looks like he might have been blocked by Morris. His shot came up short. Wasn't sure if it was blocked by Morris. Tough angle. Doesn't matter because Morris is the one with the ball. Looks like Morris might have been the one to touch it last. At least that's what the Montreal players wanted. But he was not going hard after the ball as if he knew that it was not off of him. He will be the one inbounding instead. Good find to Kirstein. Kirstein can slow the ball down and take it to give it to Frieden. Instead, he'll push it. Man on him. Man pokes the ball away. Great defense over by Man. Gets it to Shizgal. Shizgal gets it to Fallenbaum. Fallenbaum has Drazen if he wants it. Instead, he'll go all the way to himself for himself. Pizer with the foul. Not a bad foul, actually, as he would have had the easy layup otherwise. It'll be two shots at the line for Ethan Fallenbaum. But nobody from Montreal has been able to get hot here in the second half. And uh, they are clearly and obviously in uh, trouble. Well, with 3.30 left, press is going to be pretty important here as Montreal will almost certainly come out try to press. If Cooper's able to break that press, they are almost certainly will come, come out with a Tier 4 championship. Second free throw, no good. Only made one. Got, if you're going yeah, to come back in this sort of game, you've got to hit all your shots. I don't care if they're free throws. I don't care if they're threes. I don't care if they're twos. Cooper has dominated you in the second half. You were leading 19 to 10. It's now 56-40. Azdoba gets it to Pizer. Does Pizer want the three? He realizes, well, I don't get a lot of game action, or at least I haven't gotten a lot of game action today. I'm going to do the smart thing and kick the ball out. Azdoba gets the layup inside. He tips his own miss. Montreal not boxing out. Montreal is getting outplayed in the second half. It's 58-40 Cooper, and they are three minutes away from a Tier 4 championship. Yeah, well, that was Montreal not boxing out. So we're taking advantage of that small player, but we've seen him get grab a lot of rebounds here today. Yeah, and Coach was worried about stretching out Osdoba, but being that Osdoba, Osdoba looked much better in pregame warmups today. That's why he has played most of the game. Maybe he takes out Osdoba here. Maybe he gives a rest to Morris. While he has used his entire bench, there's no, so there's no, there's no reason to do what, you know, a full line switch and bring out some of your other players who haven't gotten tournament experience so that they can have some fun in the tournament and play for three minutes. All of their players play. All their players have played in every single one of their games. So no need for Coach Noakes to empty out the bench. There's three minutes to go. Three minutes from a Tier 4 championship. And Montreal looks defeated. They had the lead early. Drazen not looking happy. They've they worked a lot. They 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 watch the, they they I believe they, they practice four times a week. Yeah, so they actually practice four times a week for a total of eight to ten hours. Eight to ten hours a week. Wow. For more for more than six months a year. So Montreal Heat team, they work hard. There's nothing nothing to to hang your heads about. Played a great game in the first half. Cooper's a very talented team. And Shizgal looked like he was going to dish off the ball. Instead, he used two hands to float it up and in, but nobody is back from Montreal. Pizer will lay it in. Azdoba's got his hands pointed to the air. Morris has one finger pointed to the air. They know that they're going to be the Tier 4 champions. They're going to be number one. The kick out, this one's from Castile. Castile, too long, rebounded by Shizgal. Shizgal with Pizer on him. Looking to get a few points, looking to get in the scorebook and get some other experience. Aaron Azule, the older brother of the Yakov Azule, a travel is called on Shizgal. The other Azule is in the game getting some experience. Well, for Montreal, they were they they believed that they were underseeded, and I think they certainly proved even if they even the defeat today, I think they certainly proved that they were a little underseeded in this tournament. They play very well. They're they're a very good team. They just got a little outplayed here by Cooper, who are a phenomenally talented team. And a beautiful touch pass from Drazen to Levy. They're not giving up. There's only they're down 16 with two minutes to go, but they're just not giving up. 
We just see we see Drazen's talent coming out in front of us. An excellent play by him. Asdoba gets inside. Nearly blocked by Drazen, but they call the foul. It'll be two shots for Asdoba, who has been tremendous today for Cooper. Yeah, especially in this fourth quarter, Sim Asdoba really putting finishing touches on a great performance. It's a point guard of this team, one of the leaders of this team, and he's showing today why that is. Free throw gets the roll. Orgel is going to check into the game. Orgel is going to check into the game. Free throw no good and Drazen is going to bring up the ball with 1.45 to go as we see the DRS and SER players coming on to this Max Stern Athletic Center floor. Shot is no good from Drazen. Cooper, as usual, pushing. Another no-look pass, but Orgel's blocked. Another beautiful no-look pass from Morris, who has just been insane today. Kirsty nearly travels. Up instead, he finds a beautiful pass to Frieden. Frieden finds a pass to Orgel. Orgel lays it up and in. Nice pass to Levy. Levy inside. Looked for the foul. Doesn't get any. The ref puts his hands out like there was no foul. Drazen putting in full effort, but can't get the steal. Kirsty now to Frieden. Frieden slows the game down. There's 1.10 to go. Simchas Doba not really looking at the play. Throws it out to Frieden. With 19 on the shot clock, they can just use all of the shot clock and basically run out the game. Orgel has not gotten a lot of playing time today because of his four foul. A timeout to Montreal. They will bring out their bench to get everyone experienced. Well, they did not get the result they have wanted today. Good move by Le Coach Levy to, uh, you know, Respectful move, at least, by yep. Coach Levy. Getting everyone some playing time. The only Drazen probably got benefit from some playing time a couple years ago, and I think that that really helped him, especially when he came back to Sarachek two, two years later. He had a great performance at Sarachek. Jordan Drazen certainly played great, and for Cooper Max, it's a bittersweet victory for Ethan Morris and Devin Frieden because their coach has been coaching them, Coach James Noakes. He's been coaching them since the fifth grade. One last ride for them. And looks like they're going to win the Tier 4 championship. That's exactly how you want to go out for Ethan Morris to fit in with their coach, Coach and we, and we see our president, the president of Max Live, David Schwartzman, informing a few players that we will interview them after the game, after this Tier 4 championship has finished. Montreal with one minute to go. Obviously looking for points still. Shot no good. That shot was taken by the younger Freundlich, a ninth grader. You're going to have to bear with me. I apologize because we are now seeing many players from Montreal, which we have not seen all game. Kahn's, however, I do remember. Kahn's takes the three. Kahn's no good. And the rebound is taken by Mendelssohn. And Mendelssohn for Cooper, as always, looking to push. But he throws this one off the Max logo. Pizer runs into the Max logo and will not score two. With just 24 to go, Cooper is going to win the Tier 4 championship. And what a dominant performance here by Cooper. They were down 19 to 10 early, but came all the way back, took the halftime lead at 30 to 28, outscored Montreal 17 to 2 in the third quarter. And they have won every quarter except for the first. They have dominated this game. A great job by them. And Montreal, while they did not look at their best in the second half today and did not obviously get the result which they wanted. An excellent performance showing that they are clearly an underseated team. Nearly defeating the Ida Crown Aces on opening yep. day. Ida Crown is yep. going to be playing in the Tier 3 Championship. And defeating Sky High of San Diego pretty easily the 17th seed as two free throws are knocked down by Daniel Sternhall and Cooper will run out the clock. They've waited two years to be here. They haven't been here in two. They fell in the Tier 2 Championship game last, last year. The last second shot from Sternhall is no good. Cooper is the Tier 4 champions. We'll be back after a commercial break. We will see you with three Cooper players, the stars of this game, after handshakes. Triple by two men, layup up and in. This awesome ball movement, and there's a steal by Simcoe. 
Simpler Halber taking in spin move, lefty layup up and in. Out to Halber, Halber for three, goal! Simpler Halber! Halber thinks about the three, a step back to three, what is? Wow! It's up top, Simpler Halber, corner three, it's good! Simpler Halber with the fist bump! Halber now has a bump shot, picks it in! Simpler Halber! Nice spin move there by Terrell, and he drains it. Ryan Terrell is starting to heat up. What a great reverse there by Ryan Terrell. Is there anything this guy can't do? Ryan Terrell gets double teamed, shoots it anyway, and knocks it down. Inside, Terrell underneath, gets it to go. Ryan Terrell takes the ball. And that's a one-handed wow. slam jamma I mean, Terrell, the pull-up. As Baker takes it down, and here goes Terrell. This is going to be fun. Brian Terrell! I think my honor. Okay, you think and welcome dog, back to the right. Max Turn Athletic Center with your Tier 4 champions, the Cooper Max from Tennessee. And a, a dominant performance today. You guys were down 19-10 early, came all the way back, was leading at the half, won the third quarter 17-2, and just absolutely took over. And Ethan, we saw a lot of unselfish play from you, just dishing the ball off to Asher, to other players inside. Tell us about that sort of unselfishness and how that leads to buckets. Yeah, he said here. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, well, Kayla Malovsky, my father, told me that, um, that, you know, you got to get your teammates involved. He was my senior. He's also my father. Happy to be both. And, um, you know, he wanted me to pass the ball to him back in the day, but he was pretty garbage, so I never gave it to him. But now that I have good teammates, I give him the ball every time, set him sure. on the spots, at I got Dave, hey, Nussie. Hey, hey, not Sim. Yeah, not me. <laughs> Sim, we saw... We were talking to Coach before the game. He said that you were still recovering from bronchitis. Yeah, you, I was. you had a bad cough. You weren't 100%, but didn't look like you weren't 100%. You looked 100% today. Mm -hmm. Tell us about putting in that effort, extra effort, knowing that your season is basically ending here and mm -hmm. knowing that you want to end it with a Tier 4 championship. Well, first off, I like to thank my dogs back at home, Bella and Ollie, that they're watching. Um, but, you know, yeah, my bronchitis, it was pretty bad. I was in bed for a few days before, but, you know, uh, Sarah Tech, man. Sarah Tech, so you gotta, you gotta be hyped for that. And uh, just give my song to play. Tier 4 champion. It's pretty exciting. So. Very exciting. I've been dreaming yeah, of Tier 4 championship my entire life. <laughs> well, boys, what are you going to do to celebrate this victory? What's going on after this game? You know what we, I mean, we like to do? <laughs> we, we, got, we got some uh, non-alcoholic champagne in the locker room. Yeah. We're going to hit it up. Yeah, We're going to have a boy over there. There's going to come. Dances. I just want to say I love my mama. Shout out mama. I love you, mama. Thank you, Shout David. Great yeah. job, David. Great job. And if y'all want to come to the rave in the locker room, feel free, though, okay? Yeah, everyone, five, everyone. Five, five yeah. Thank you, guys. Right, well, thank you uh, very much. great job. Great performance. Real. Dominant performance today. Thank you, thank you. Tier 4 champions, the Cooper Max. We'll be back with the next game, the third place game between the DRS Wildcats and the SAR Sting for Cuba Poppers and Joey Hirschfeld. That is it for us. We'll go to commercial. Lifer now driving, getting it to go, and the foul gave Lifer. He is an animal. Gobby Smith again in transition, goes up against Lifer, who stuffs it down. Here we go, Gabe Lifer. The long the three, they needed a heat, got it. As Mabel did. And David, the huge block. A rejection. And the championship potentially at home with Lifer with a big block. Three seconds on the shot clock. Lifer puts it up. That's good! Wow! Gabe Lifer! Holy And offensive movement by, oh no, no, it's fast to Silo, yes! 
What a play by Tyler Hode. And Tyler Hode, a big three. In all of those experiences, Tyler Hode with his own rebound and then puts it back in. What an effort for Tyler Hode. Oh, going to play their game. Hode for three. It's good. Tyler Hode, the crowd silencer. We're waiting for him at the hoop, and he wanted some style points. Hode for three on the other end. Good. Tries to look inside the helper as a wide open Tyler Hode who shoots for three. Good. Sorry for the scream, but Tyler Hode knocks down the three. Booker from three, the big man knocking it down from downtown. Back and forth, no shot clock here, so you can play with patience to do it. Didn't, couldn't do it there, and Bokar will go up for the dunk! Yes! A pick by Britton, but the Max keep the ball. Inside to Boker, a nice pass from Gwedeyes. Boker finishes, Lifer inside, Boker pump fakes, back up, and one, Kevin Boker! Lifer to Boker, Boker with the easy layup! Feed the beast! Rebound by Boker, Boker with the air 